Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Thought today we'd just do a fantastic little seascape, and I think you'll enjoy this one. So I tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. Today I have my standard old pre-stretch canvas. The top is just plain, and I've covered it with a little bit of liquid white. The bottom, we've covered with black gesso, allowed that to dry completely. And then I went back, and I had to make some major decisions already. I'm going to have a big crashing wave in here. So where that wave is, I've put a little bit of phthalo green and phthalo blue mixed together, but it's to the green side. The top and underneath here, I've covered with a little lavender made from alizarin crimson and phthalo blue. And the very bottom here, I've put a little Van Dyke brown. All of these colors are transparent enough that against this black gesso, they still look black. Oh, and one other thing. I covered the entire canvas with a thin, even coat of liquid clear before I put these transparent colors on. And that, that allows you to put a very small amount of paint on there instead of having to put it on so thick. And uh, works better. Okay, let's have some fun today. Let's do something maybe that looks sort of like a little sunset. I'm going to start with a tiny bit of the Indian yellow. Don't need much on the two-inch brush, just a little. Okay, let's go up in here. Maybe we'll have a little sun up here that's setting in the distance. So we'll just start off and just drop a little yellow right in here, a little, little bit of the Indian yellow, something like so. And without cleaning the brush, we'll go into a little yellow ochre, just a small amount, because it'll mix with the liquid white and automatically you'll get all of these beautiful tones and values here. Okay, maybe a little bit of that yellow ochre up above. Little up above, little down below. There we are. All right. And we're just using little little X's, little crisscross strokes. Something about like so. Maybe just to touch more of that. We'll let that sort of drift right on up here into the sky. Wherever. Okay, now then. I'll reach up here and grab the least little touch of alizarin crimson. Still in the same old brush. And we'll just work a little bit of that in. And we'll sort of let it work down into the yellow. And it'll blend together and make some beautiful, beautiful colors. There. Okay, now. Maybe the least little touch more of that. Okay, good, good. I like that. Now for the very top, I'm going to take a lizard and crimson and a little bit of the phthalo blue. And we'll just mix them on the brush because we don't need much. And we'll come right up in here. Maybe we'll put a little more blue. I want that a little more to the bluish side. So you sort of test it, and if it's not exactly what you want, change it because this is your world. And on this piece of canvas, you can do anything that you want to do. We'll bring it right down to the red and stop. See, that red acts as a barrier between the yellow and the blue, and that way we don't end up with a bright green sky. Sometimes those bright green skies have a tendency to bother you. All right. <laughs> That's the fun part of this. Of course, uh, the camera crew here doesn't think so. Now, with a clean, dry brush, and be sure it's dry. You want to keep this as dry as possible. I want to just blend all this together, starting in the light area and working outward. There we are. These are the kind of colors that, that just make you happy. They really make your day better when you have all these beautiful little colors. And you blend this till you can't tell where one color starts and the next color stops. And when you're doing this at home, sort of step back and take a look-see because it's very difficult if you're standing right up against it to tell if your colors are blended properly. So stand back, get the old glass of iced tea, and just relax for a second and look at it. And if it needs more blending, then go back and blend it a little more. Tell you what, let's have some more fun. We get crazy. I'm going to take a little of the bright red, very small amount that we don't need much. Just tap a little into the brush, just a very small amount. Let's go right in here. And let's put a nice warm glow right here at the horizon. Something maybe about like that. Just a little pink. A little pink. And by 
tapping, we can give the indication maybe there's a little cloud looking thing there. Whatever, whatever, there we are. And then blend it. Good. And that'll look like a little pink area right at the horizon when we're done. Okay, let's get crazy today. I'm gonna make some lavender using some phthalo blue and alizarin crimson proportionately. Much, much more crimson than blue. Much more crimson than blue. All right, wipe off the knife. Now it's very difficult to tell what color that is because it's gonna look black. Put a little white out there and mix it and you can see what it's gonna value down to or what it's gonna look like when you put it up on the canvas. Great. Today, let's use the old fan brush. What the heck? We'll take the fan brush and put just a small amount of color on it because it's very dark. We don't need a lot of color. Just a little. And let's go up in here and maybe in our world there live some happy little clouds that just float around all day. Just take the corner of the brush and begin creating basic cloud shapes. But don't just throw them in at random. Make a Make a basic shape when you do this. There we are. Something like that. Maybe there's some little stringy ones right down here at the horizon. Little stringy clouds. There. Maybe over here there's one that comes drifting in. Give them a friend here. Just however many you want in your world. Sort of look at it, make a big decision, and, and decide where you think they should be. Watch here, watch here, I want to show you something. Take your finger, look here, take a little white. Let's have a sun up here. Let's have a little sun. I think it would really work nice in this particular painting. And just blend it a little bit. Now let's, let's have a little cloud that lives right here. Right there, just a little floater. There he is. He floats right around the sun here. Really, he has the view of a lifetime right here he can see everything. He's got the best light here. There. Okay, maybe, maybe he's got a friend that, maybe it floats right around here. I think everything needs a friend. Even an old cloud, shoot. Gotta give him a friend too. Maybe this one comes right out. It comes right across the sun. But make up little stories about these little clouds and characters and whatever you have in your paintings. There, speaking of little characters, in this series several times I've showed you my little squirrels. I wanna, I wanna show you another one. I'm just gonna make a few clouds here while you're looking at these little rascals. But I think you really enjoy them. They're some of my special people. Here's one, he was on my set tee one day and, and I had a, some magazines out. And he had to sneak up and look at the magazines. And there's a fox, if you can see it, on that Florida wildlife. <laughs> and it sort of shook him up. I think he recognized the picture of that fox and knew he was sort of a natural enemy. But he did his little war dance and, and got out of there. But when squirrels get excited, it's easy to tell because they'll, their little tails will just go crazy. I mean, they will do a dance. And that's so cute. There, isn't he something else? And I have two males and two females. Shoot, who knows, maybe pretty soon we'll have some little squirrels, if they calm down enough. There we are. And we're still putting in some little clouds here while you're watching the little rascals. All right. Shoot, we just going cloud crazy here. I tell you what, let's, let's really get crazy. Here's a big one that lives up here. Maybe there's an old big one up here. Still just using the corner of the fan brush. And just let these old clouds float around the sky. Clouds should look very free. But you do need to do a basic cloud shape when you do this. In classes sometimes I see people just bang a, a shape up there and then they don't understand why it didn't turn into a cloud. You do have to do a basic shape. And we'll just blend it a little bit. I want these clouds to remain quite dark today. So we're not gonna do a whole bunch more to them other than blend them, soften the edges, and leave them alone. There. All right, I lived in Florida. 
Yeah, right outside of Orlando, where Mickey Mouse's house is at. And I'm not far from the ocean. I go down and study the ocean, and or that's the excuse I use. Actually, I'm down there sort of playing and enjoying a few rays. And, but I act like I'm studying it. And watch how water works. And, but if you have time to do that, or if you're close enough to an ocean to do it, it's a super way of learning how to make, make it all work and come together. If you don't, you can get books or... Now they have videotapes that you can sit and study. You can see exactly how that water works and, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. There. All right, now all we're going to do today is just blend that a little bit. Just blend it. See there? That easy. Now these little stringy ones, all you have to do is just blend over the top of them. And they work just fantastic. They just sort of drop right in there. All right. And sometimes I like to play a little bit with clouds and maybe have a little projection in one that's... Maybe this little projection is coming out a little more. So you can do that just by putting a little change of value in there. All right. Then we'll just blend that a little. It'll help give that illusion that that sort of projecting out when it's all done. And if you ever do one you don't like, you just blend it into the other clouds. It'll just go away. There. I just beat the brush to knock any excess paint off. All right. Okay, let's wash this old brush. We wash our brushes with odorless thinner, shake them off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of them. Okay, I have a little piece of masking tape across here. To... So we have a nice straight horizon line. Now then, right along there, I'm going to take a little of my lavender color because I didn't cover it naturally because there was masking tape there. And just fill that in. Now, we're in business. As I mentioned earlier, we had to make a major decision in this particular painting when we first started so we know where the wave is going to be in this one because I wanted a little bit of green in there. So I'll take a little touch of the titanium white. We'll just use a fan brush and come right up in here. Let's make our first decision. Let's say our wave lives right there and over and maybe it'll just sort of float on out like that. Okay. That's really the only big major decision that we have to make at this point. Now we'll go back in here, start right at the horizon, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to exaggerate. I'm making little strokes like that. So it'll look like little things are happening way back here. Now the white's going to pick up that nice lavender color that's already on the canvas. All these little things will happen. As you get closer to you, leave more of these darker areas. Don't kill them all. This begins to work and it gets to be fun and you, you have a tendency just to knock them all out. Don't kill them all. They're going to end up being your good friends here. There we are. Okay, let me wipe some of the paint off that brush. Now we can begin. Yeah, better clean it. Now we can begin. I want to blend some of this back a little bit. Just blend it back so it looks like there's little troughs between them and these ones that are right up close here. There. Okay, we'll come back and drop some highlights on those in a little bit, and that'll separate them, really make them nice. There we go. Now then. And that gives us a background already. Now maybe our wave's going to turn right over like that. So let's go in here. We can use a filbert for that, and it doesn't matter. Filbert, fan, whatever. Take a least little touch of the cad yellow with white, just titanium white. But the least little bit of the cad yellow in it, just enough to give it a tiny little yellowish hue. And we can go up in here. If this is going to be the eye or the transparency in our wave, whatever you want to call it, make a big decision. 
and really get in there and scrub some of that color in. Just scrub it in. There. And we'll sort of let it just sort of work back a little bit as light plays through there. Now see, that's going to pick up that phthalo green and phthalo blue that we put in. And beautiful things will happen automatically. Now we'll take a two inch brush. Be sure it's dry. Most important. Take it and go right in here. And it's going to look like the whole brush is moving. It's not. The hair stays in one place. There you can see it. See how slow? Only I'm going to do it quite rapidly. But the brush is barely moving. You just wind it up, mix it up, stir it. And you can make this as smooth as silk. Just absolutely as smooth as silk. It's unbelievable the effects that you can create using these tools that are quite unorthodox. But look at that. See that glow beginning to appear? There. And it's so easy. And you could do this with a one-inch brush if you wanted to. Now we begin thinking about shape and form and how little water is working in here. There we are. Already we're beginning to have some of the basic things in here that we need. Okay. Maybe while we have that old brush going, here's our sun that's shining through here and down underneath here. We maybe we're going to have some light reflecting. I'll take some of that same color, go underneath here, and just pull it straight down. Straight down. Like so. I know you're saying, Bob, you've really messed it up this time. And you may be right. We'll see. Then go across like that. And it'll create that illusion of wetness. A machine coming across the water, the lights reflecting across there. See, already you can see how wet that is. This is going to be a, we'll have some, yeah, we'll have a beach up here. And already we have wet sand laying up there. Okay, I have several old fan brushes going here. Let me grab another one. I'll take a little white. Now then, up in here, this is the fun part. We have to make a big decision. Maybe our waves come in here and go and shh. Got to make those little noises. Grab it and pull it. Just pull it. There. Just let that turn and crash. Now, if you pull this down too far, well, let's see if I can, I'll just do it. Take a clean fan brush and you can grab it. This one's okay, but I just want to show you how, because this happens. You can take a clean fan brush, grab it, and pull it back up. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it or not, but, but see how you can, there, you can pull it right back up. And you can pull that darkness back into the light, or you can pull the light into the darkness. Either way that you want to go. Up to you. That's a good little thing to know, because sometimes you get into little problems and where you pull too much light, and that'll save you. Okay, let's take a little white, a little bit of that lavender color, a little bit of the blue, I want it to the bluish side, a little of that green too. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty. Let's go up in here and let's throw this in to create the illusion of a nice shadow in our foam. There it comes, there it comes, right on around. Shoot, maybe it just crashes over there a little bit. I don't know, I don't know. When you do your seascape, you figure out where it crashes over and where the waves deteriorate to the point it's collapsing. Let's see, while well, we have lavender in that old fan brush, let's have some fun. <laughs> you know me, I like to get crazy with these. I like to get crazy. Take a little of that lavender color. Maybe we back here, there's a little, little headland that pokes his head way out in here. We can just put that on with a fan brush. Bumps. There. Okay. And we'll let it come right down there a little way so it's not just sitting right on the horizon. It's setting a little bit down. And maybe a little darker color while we have it going. Maybe right in here. 
There's a bigger one. It's a little closer, so it's darker. And there's more detail in it, of course. Shoot, who knows, maybe it goes way on up like that. And this is still just that same lavender color. A little bit more to the blue side now. There we go. And we can take a little bit of white, a little bit of bright red. There we are. Just mix them on the brush. So we have the lavender, bright red, a little white. And we can go up in here and just by tapping, just tapping with a pan brush. Now, I don't want this to be too distinct yet. As it gets closer, we're going to see more. Right here, I just want to make some basic little shapes, make these little stones look like they're setting right out here. But all you have to do is just tap with a pan brush and form your stones. Form them. Don't, don't just tap, though. Think about the, all the little cracks and stuff in that stone. And with a clean brush, very gently, very gently, three hairs and some air, you can grab that and make it look just like a little rock. Be careful to pay attention to angles, though, when you're blending that with that big brush and barely touch it. Just whisper like. Now they want to take a little white on the old fan brush and maybe there's a some little foam. Well, we could have used a filbert for that, too. It would have worked just as well. A little foam splashing right along in there. I like to make, this is the fun part of making seascapes, is this foam. Just work it right around like that. There it goes. Maybe, maybe it comes right on around, I don't know. Something like that. Maybe there's a little down there. <laughs> but that'll give you an idea how easy that is. Pull a little bit of that over so you can see something collapsing in the background back here. See, there it goes. Now that one's crashing over also. And back to my fan brush that has the lavender colors on it. I'm going to add some Van Dyke brown and dark sienna to that same lavender color because things are getting closer to us now. Maybe in our world, we'll have a big stone that lives right there. Big old stone. It comes right down. And we just fill that up. All you got to do, maybe part of it's in front of the crashing wave. Okay, now, I have several fan brushes going, so I don't have to spend all my time just washing them. We'll take a little titanium white, a little dark sienna, just throw that in there. Maybe even a little uh, bright red into it, not much. Now then, once again, by just tapping, you can literally shake these stones. Just tap. Make all kinds of little things in there. See, there's another stone. Comes right down. Take a nice, clean, dry brush. Very lightly, very lightly. Touch it, pull. Touch it and pull. And if you want to pull a little of that color down, you can do that. But you can literally shape and form these stones doing just like this. Because stones sometimes are sort of hard to do when we first start. Now then, back to our brush that has a white on it. And we can crash a little more of this red up here on these, all oh, these little doers. Just let it go. A little bit over in here, wherever you want. Okay, now we got to start thinking about how this water is going to work in here. All these little things going on, little foam. But as it lays down over here, this gets flatter. See it there? Just lays down. Maybe sometimes there's another little doer right in here. Little wave. There we go. Hmm, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. We'll take a little of that lavender, mix it with some titanium white, and maybe right in here, see, I'll highlight that. And shoot, let's put another one. We'll be brave here. We gotta, 
but just lay this on, pushing the knife very firmly, very firmly. And if you want to get really crazy, maybe there's another one. Add a little of that phthalo blue to that, not much. Oh yeah, that helps. That helps. Maybe there's another one. We got over here somewhere. There it goes. And all you're doing is laying on a little layer of paint. And we can take a clean fan brush and blend that back. Just blend it back. Grab it and blend it back. Let it work. There. But you can make all kinds of beautiful little effects. Just like so. With our liner brush, I'm going to take a little Van Dyke Brown. Maybe right up here there's an old tree. Poor old tree. Maybe it, maybe there's just some arms hanging out here. It just about had it. Times are rough up here. Fan brush, I'm going to take a little sap green, a little yellow. Let's pop in a little grass down here around his foot. So we want a little, little grass in there. Then you can take your liner brush at home and put in all kinds of little details here. See, there's a little line right around there. But begin putting in all kinds of little lines and foamy things, little yellow and white. And you go back in here and begin highlighting all these little waves like that. See? Choo, choo, choo. There. And with that, we about have a finished seascape. And the old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to call it a day. So I think we'll call that one finished. Hope you've enjoyed this little seascape. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Mm -hmm.